This video is sponsored by Skillshare. When it gets to the clinical trial stage in the development process of drugs or medicines, there needs to be a control in order to test how effective the substance is at doing the job it was made to do. So a substance or treatment which has no intended therapeutic value is a control. Common controls include tablets that are just sugar pills, injections using just saline, or even pretend surgery. The control is a placebo. The placebo is made to resemble the medication or therapy, which should prevent the control group knowing whether a treatment is active or inactive. So what we expect in these trials is that the active substance that we're testing will have an effect on the person, either positive or negative, and we can check for any side effects. With the control, as it's a fake treatment, we expect nothing to happen as it's not an active substance, or at least we don't expect the test subjects to report similar things as those in the active group. Clinical trials are often double blinded so that the researchers also do not know which test subjects are receiving the active or placebo treatment. In 1998, the New York Times wrote an article about placebos and how they can be a powerful tool in medicine. They reported on a case whereby a patient had essentially healed himself through his own thoughts by thinking that he had been given a strong dose of medication when actually the healing serum he had been injected with was just plain water. And this is what's known as the placebo effect. The placebo effect is essentially a response to a placebo that has a positive effect on the individual. And if we were to go the other way and the individual has a negative effect to the placebo, then that is what we call a nocebo effect. The nocebo effect is seen mostly where patients are given medication or therapy that has a known potential side effect where they experience the side effects out of expectation. So what they say could be true, what you don't know can't hurt you. Even though placebo and nocebo effects are presumably psychogenic, they can induce measurable physiological changes in the body. The New York Times stated at the time that scientists were learning that much of human perception is based not on information flowing into the brain from the outside world, but what the brain based on previous experience expects to happen next. The article was updated to include newer studies, including one from 2002, which I know isn't really recent, but it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, where 180 patients with osteoarthritis of the knee were randomly assigned to receive one of three treatments, um, either arthroscopic debridement, I don't know if I'm saying that right because it's in French, or arthroscopic, arthroscopic lavage, or placebo surgery. So scraping out the knee joint, washing out the joint, or doing nothing. In the doing nothing group, um, or the doing nothing operation, doctors anesthetized the patient, made cuts in the knee as if to insert the usual instruments, and then pretended to operate. And it was found that two years after surgery, patients who underwent the pretend surgery reported the same amount of relief from pain and swelling as those who had the real operations. How crazy is that? And another study aimed to use a placebo to restore sexual arousal in women who said they were non-orgasmic. The women were hooked up to a machine that they were told measured their vaginal blood flow, which was used as an index of arousal. They were then shown stimuli that would arouse most women, but the folk running the study played a little trick on the women by sending a false um, feedback signal back that their vaginal blood flow had increased when it happened and almost immediately they became genuinely aroused afterwards because they were told that like this scientific fact proves that you're aroused and then that made the brains think that, oh my goodness, I'm aroused. Crazy. Your brain is crazy, man. It was also found that placebos are about 55% to 60% as effective as most active medications like aspirin and codeine for controlling pain. And placebos that relieve pain can be blocked with a drug naloxone that also blocks morphine, as was found by a study carried out in California by dentists in 1978, which I will link below too. The main explanation to this placebo effect has been put down to expectancy theory, basically what the brain believes about the immediate future. Because you have had positive experiences in the past with medications that have relieved pain or whatnot, then you have been conditioned into thinking that the next medication or therapy you receive will also kind of work. Kind of like when um, someone goes to tickle you and you have that sense of impending doom and uncontrollable urge to laugh. It's because you have experienced what being tickled is like before, so someone just has to go through the motions of going to tickle you to get the same reaction from you. Because you know what to expect. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in design, business, technology and more. They've got a whole heap of videos and you could even learn how to make motion graphics brought to you by the folk who make animations for Chris Gazette videos. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare with a special offer just for you awesome chaps. 
you can get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Sign up for your free two-month membership by following the link below and start learning today.